With science so advanced, it is hard to think that there are still some scantily explored areas in the world. Perhaps outer space is the one place in the universe that humans have not figured out, right? Wrong. The deepest part of the ocean is less visited than space. I know what you're thinking. Why not? It's right there. But once we tell you these insane facts about the deepest part of the ocean, called Hadal Zone of the Ocean, it will become alarmingly clear why no one dares visit the deep blue. Crazy, right? Number one. It reveals the secrets of our existence. The Hadal Zone is not entirely unexplored, of course. Some creatures have been extracted from shallow depths of the trenches, like Pyrococcus CH1. Sounds fancy, but facts are most of the creatures that sound fancy are insects. These creatures are what you call extremophiles, which, you know, finally, a scientific word that makes sense. Basically, they are in the same category as quote-unquote aliens. Life outside of Earth survives under extreme temperatures, pressures, and light intensity. Their adaptions can be somewhat predicted by studying extremophiles from the Hadal Zone. It is very cold down there, around 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, which is 33.8 Fahrenheit for everyone who still refuses to use the metric system. It may seem like just another summer day to all of you Canadians, <laughs> but keep in mind that most water creatures survive at a higher temperature, and they do not have complicated thermoregulation mechanisms like us or central heating. And it is so dark. If ocean has a bright side, this is the darkest zone. Also, the pressure of the Hadal zone is whack. Seriously whack. It varies between 600 to 1100 atmospheres, which is like placing one ton weight on your finger. Now, unless you are Captain America, your finger will explode if we put a polar bear on it. Or break, but <laughs> exploding sounds cooler. Contrary to popular belief, there are most likely no mysterious monsters down there. Mostly, there are super tiny creatures like microworms. So how does a tiny 0.67 inches of creature survive these pressures? That's what is so useful to science. We basically have an alien-like specimen in our own backyard. You know, the backyard that's a thousand meters deep. Scientists can study the adaptations of these creatures and calibrate them to different environments in space. And Viola, you have a model of a specimen that could possibly exist somewhere in space. Number two, it's really deep. The Hadal zone of the ocean is basically made of disjointed trenches. There are 33 in total, 26 are in the Pacific. Some more interesting facts about its general size is that the Hadal zone accounts for about 0.2% of the entire seafloor, but holds 45% of the depth. The most popular example used to give an idea of just how deep the Hadal zone is is that you could fit Mount Everest in the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest spot in the world, and still have a mile or so left. In fact, the whole zone varies from 600 to 1100 meters. It really should come as no surprise that this area has not received enthusiastic divers. Soft generation this is, no excitement whatsoever over getting crushed by smooth waves. So how do we know how deep it is? Staying true to our human psyche, we explode stuff to find out. TNT explosives are thrown into the trench and the echoes produced are recorded to measure the height. However, at this point we still did not know exactly the kind of creatures that could survive six kilometers down the ocean. The first expedition to finally discover what even is in these depths was the HMS Challenger expedition. From 1873 to 1876, these brave souls managed to bring up samples from around eight kilometers. But there's always a catch and the catch was that this find could be from shallow fish that had ventured at 8 kilometers and then died. Boo! Finally, in 1901, the Princess Alice expedition found creatures from below 6 kilometers. And the first picture ever was taken by Jacques Cousteau. If that sounds familiar, it's because either you are old, <laughs> or you vaguely remember Phoebe from Fenn screaming, I love Jacques Cousteau! Now, getting back on track. Cousteau was the first one to ever take a picture of these zones in 1956. This was the Romananchi Trench in the Atlantic. So truly, this part was actually seen by the people of the world after it got Stevie Wonder. Now, we're not implying that a wonder was discovered because of Stevie Wonder, but really, that's exactly what we're saying. Number three, the real horror of the deep is posed by humans. We could say on the bright side, humans can't destroy what they can't know. Nope. Since mankind is not satisfied to leave any part of the world untouched by our garbage existence, even the trenches of the Hadal Zone were used as a dumping site. 
In the 1970s, pharmaceutical companies thought, hmm, what haven't rendered useless yet? And it immediately clicked. Kingdom of Hades. They dumped literally 880 Boeing 747s worth of waste into the Puerto Rico trench. Although it is not really inconsiderate since it is not possible to clean the ocean so deep, we don't need to worry about it. Viola. No one likes all these worms that live down there anyway. Oh, and there's material containing 3.9 kilograms of extremely radioactive material in the Tonga Trench, in case you wanted to be the first diver to go there. Number four. When it moves, it causes time to shift. This line does seem like a cheesy dance comment, but when you apply it to the Java Trench, not so much. In fact, it's slightly disturbing how the Sumatra Andaman earthquake of 2004 released so much energy it caused the Earth's rotation to shorten by 2.6 microseconds. Another movement in these trenches caused the rotation to shorten by 1.8 microseconds. Number 5. Its name is truly fitting. These trenches are not called the hadapelagic zones for nothing. It's, of course, named after Hades, the lord of the underworld. And we just know Percy Jackson fans are quivering right now. The idea behind the name is that creatures can enter the underworld, but leaving is nearly impossible. Similarly, these depths have creatures that may survive the pressures and darkness of these trenches, but their extreme adaptations mean that they will not be able to leave it. Hence, the name. So folks, do you agree that the Hadal Zone is truly terrifying? Or is this notion just way off? Let us know in the comments below and we'll pin the best one. Make sure you like this video and share it with your friends and family, then argue with whoever claims that the Hadal Zone is not just a huge metaphor for loneliness. But don't fight too much.